Welcome back to Game Dev In Depth. In this video, we're going to be talking about something that can be a huge source of confusion for beginner programmers. It has to do with the idea of real numbers, which are fractions or decimals, versus integers or whole numbers. A lot of times when we're calculating movement, we might come up with a non-integer number, like 2.5. However, there are a fixed number of pixels on the screen, and you can't draw something that's at 2.5 pixels. It has to be an integer. This can cause a number of confusing and hard to solve problems in your movement or animation code. Okay, to see some of those problems, let's look first at our simple uh, eight-way movement example we did. Um, and I'm gonna focus only on the X direction for this example. So when we press the right or the left key, we're setting our velocity to five, which is five pixels per frame. And then we're telling the rectangle to add that amount, you know, to move that amount. So we move five pixels to the right or five pixels to the left, or we change the rectangle's x coordinate by five, right? And we move left and right. Well, let's, I'm gonna change these to one just to keep things very simple. But let's say there was some reason you wanted the movement to the right to be faster than the left by a little bit. Let's say you wanted it to be 1.5. So now I should move faster to the right than to the left. Well, turns out when I do it, there's moving to the left, there's moving to the right. Can you see a difference? No. In fact, there is no difference. What's happening is the rectangles in Pygame are based on pixels, and you can't have a fraction of a pixel. So all of the properties of the rectangle must be integers or whole numbers. So when this happens and we say take the x and add 1.5 to it, Python changes this 1.5, which is a real number, into a, an integer. And it does that not by rounding, but by truncating. So that 1.5 just becomes one. So there's no difference between one and 1 1.9, for example, anything, it's gonna be the same. So that means you can only have whole number speeds, right? Well, not exactly. But before I go into how we fix this, I also wanna show you another thing that uh, is might be unexpected and definitely trips up a lot of students when they're starting out. What if I was to put 1.5 here? So I want to move to the left, right? I want to subtract 1.5. Well, you would think you would see the same problem, but instead what we get is there's moving to the right, there's moving to the left. See that? It's twice as fast. What's happening is this is actually getting converted to negative two. What happens is when Python converts a real number to an integer is it takes the number and does what's called a floor operation on it. It rounds it down to the next lowest integer. So the next lowest integer from 1.5 is one, but the next lowest integer from 1.5 or negative 1.5 is negative two. So that's why we moved faster to the left than the right. We were basically saying do this. So let's look at another example of this problem. In our time step example that we did in a previous video, um, we are trying to move our rectangle at 120 pixels per second. So we take that 120 and we multiply it by whatever the duration of the frame is, right? And since we're going, since we're right now going at 60 frames per second, then if we pop up the calculator here, then I'm gonna put in uh, one divided by 60. And there we go, that's how many seconds long our frame is. So that's not a nice clean integer, is it? So if we have 120, if we say we wanna move 120 pixels times, let's just put 0.017 for this illustration. I get 2.04. So I'm saying move 2.04 pixels, but we can't, so that gets truncated, 2.04. Uh, 
gets truncated to two. And that's fine, but what about if once 25 frames have gone by? Well, if we multiply that by 25, then it's going to say after 25 pixels, we should have moved 51 pixels. After Sorry, after 25 frames, we should have moved 51 pixels. But instead, if we only move 2, 2 times 25, of course, is 50. So after 25 frames or so, we've lost 1 pixel in movement. So you'll see this crop up in all sorts of ways as your programs get more advanced. And you want to do different kinds of movement. You want to do collisions. You want to do um, one thing moving towards something else. Uh, this rounding issue can cause a lot of strange errors that are really hard to figure out if you don't know what you're doing. So now let's talk about how we prevent this problem or avoid this problem. So to illustrate this, I've just made another copy of our uh, little frame-based movement example where we're trying to move 120 pixels per second, but this is going to come out to 2.04 or some or something like that, right? A, a, a non-integer amount. And the way that you prevent this rounding problem is you store your sprite's position or you track your sprite's position separately from the rectangle. So for example, since we're moving in the x direction, I'm going to make a px variable. This is position x. And I'm going to set it equal to 0 because we're going to start on the left-hand side of the screen. And now instead of increasing my rectangle's x by the velocity, I'm going to increase px. So now px will become 2.04 and then 4.08 and so on. And it doesn't get rounded. And we'll take the, we'll use the px to determine whether we need to wrap around the screen. And then once we've calculated what our px should be, we set our rectangle to be equal to that uh, to that position. Right now, obviously, if px is 4.5 or something, then the rectangle will be put to 4. But as soon as this gets to the next, gets past the next integer, the rectangle will move there. But we're still keeping the right count of how our position is changing. And if you look at this, it will be a lot smoother. There's none of those little stutters that we saw before when it would have uh, when it was rounding to the next pixel. In fact, we're not losing the every 25 frames. We're not losing the one pixel and dropping from 51 to 50. We are actually moving 51 pixels after 21 frames. So that's it. To avoid the rounding problems, you just keep track of your sprite's position in a separate variable that can stay being a real number, uh, do your calculations on it, and then just draw your rectangle at the pixel that's closest to where it's supposed to be. And then everything will, will look fine. Of course, in this example, we only were moving horizontally. So if you have vertical movement, then you also need to keep track of a vy and a position y. Um, so you have two variables for each thing. Um, if you have acceleration happening because of gravity or anything like that, then you have to have an acceleration x and y. So you can start to see the number of variables is starting to increase, and there's a lot more to keep track of. And having to separately keep track of vx and vy and all those kind of things is another problem. And in the next video, we'll talk about how you can solve that problem and simplify the number of variables that you're having to keep track of. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful for you and helps you avoid some of those rounding uh, integer versus real problems that a lot of new programmers run into and wind up scratching their heads about. As always, if you enjoyed this lesson, please press the like button below. And if you haven't already subscribed, please do so, so you can find out about the next video as soon as it's released. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.